what people call night terrors or sleep paralysis is what medical professionals call that experience of being frozen in place while you're in bed. Many people have experienced this. I mean, we have people who freak out because they literally cannot move a muscle. The only thing that moves are their eyes and their breathing. Now, the attempt at a scientific explanation is that you're in between uh, waking states, uh, different stages of sleep, and in that blurred line between stages of sleep, you lose motor function and the ability to control your arms and your legs. But shamans and mediums have known this to be a completely different situation. These are spirits interacting with you. Now, you may not like the fact that you're being held down, being held down by an energy that you cannot see, being held down by a person that you can see is disturbing enough. Now imagine if nothing is there in the room and you feel this pressure on you. It's quite terrifying, therefore they call it night terrors. It happens in the daytime as well. How do you know the difference between sleep paralysis and night terrors? Well, after a while you will begin to know it. It's only something you can experience. Usually there is a feeling of a presence in a room. I've had people tell me that they've heard a mumbling very close to their ears. Many, many years ago when I was developing and awakening my psychic gifts, I did have the sleep paralysis experience or the night terror experience where something was holding me down. I felt a spirit come very close to my ear. I could almost, as if I was feeling the mouth breathing or the lips moving very close to my ear, mumbling something incoherent. So what, what was this? Was this a demon? Was this a ghost? Was it a loved one who was trying to communicate with me? After several experiences of this, I began to get a hold of myself and say, next time this happens, I'm going to take a stand. And it is very difficult to do to bring your, your courage and your bravery up at that moment to try to break out because you're physically being held down by a metaphysical energy, something that's not in the physical. What are they trying to tell you? Well, let's approach it differently. Instead of saying that this is a negative experience, could you somehow say this could be a positive experience? What would be positive about this? Well, anything that is traumatic to you that is preventing you from feeling the way you want to feel is an opportunity for you to go to another level of your experience. What does that mean? So if something is scary, you have an opportunity for bravery. If something is painful, you have an opportunity to understand pain and to increase your pain tolerance or to go past the point of pain. What if it's a spirit guide that's very positive and trying to instill in you to snap out of fear, but they have to scare you to do it. This is something that mediums don't usually talk about. They'll always say it's some negative energy or spirit. All right, what if it was an archangel? What if I told you that that energy holding you down was an archangel? In fact, I did have a woman who once said this to me. And she said, no, no, it was a dark entity, it was shadowy. I said, do you know that spirit guides sometimes will take the form of something dark in order for you to stand up for yourself? You might call it spiritual sparring, it's not a real fight. They want you to rise into a deep, deeper awareness of yourself as a spiritual being, to understand the larger natural world, which I am not gonna call the supernatural, it's the larger natural world. They want you to understand that you are a spiritual being, that you have energy, you don't need to be afraid of anything. The energy that you have is one of freedom, of openness, of understanding. Notice I didn't say an energy of good, because we're not going to play the game of good and evil here. If you want to do that, go to traditional religion, go to hocus pocus, go to other belief systems that have this good and evil thing. You can take it as far as you want. As a shaman, I will teach you that your birth and your death are the same doorway. You use the same doorway to come into this body as you will when you use the, the exit door. The, it's, a, it's a door that swings both ways. It's just a portal. Your life is that you're focused here. That is what your life is. You're focused in this reality, this dimension. Tonight when you go to sleep, you're gonna enter into another dimension. It will be just as real as a dimension here. You'll feel pain, pleasure, you will make decisions, you will navigate, and it will feel very real just like here. You'll wake up and you won't be able to believe that it was a dream. So these are dimensions. What we're calling birth and death is simply an entrance and into another place. It's not even so much of an exit. You're just entering into a larger field of awareness. So maybe that 
energy holding you down. Like I told the woman, I said, what if it was Archangel Michael? She said, no, I know Archangel Michael. I know his energy. Really, you know the, the totality of what an Archangel does? I don't think any medium or anyone knows the totality of what an Archangel does or any spirit does. But it's possible. You must explore the possibilities if you're going to approach this to in a way that's going to help you get an answer that brings you some peace and empowers you. So maybe the Archangel is trying to awaken you to something. Usually, the through line of all spiritual teachings or events that are there to teach you something is how to find more freedom and more peace. And sometimes it takes something scary to happen for you to find that. I've had clients who have had very, very extreme cases of what they call hauntings, but in the end, it made them less afraid of anything. In the end, they found themselves to be more understanding of a much larger reality, and that led them to be more peaceful through their daily lives. Everything happens for you. There's nothing in the universe that happens that is not for you to grow and find more peace and more understanding and an expanded consciousness. So here's what you do if you're experiencing sleep paralysis in the middle of it. Now this might have, have to happen to you a few times before you find your, your balance in this. You're going to have to remind yourself to breathe. This will have to happen because most of the time this happens to people over and over again. But if you get this into your spiritual practice, if you take this, this uh, teaching that I'm giving to you and you program it into your brain that Ah, this is what I'm supposed to do, right? You know, you're trained that when there's a fire, you know, go low to the ground because there's more oxygen there. You may have never been in a fire, but you remember that teaching in school. This is the same thing I'm telling you. If you get sleep paralysis, don't fight it. Keep your eyes open and your ears open and just breathe. Your breathing isn't going to stop. If you panic, your breathing will probably get worse and you may, who knows, maybe it will stop. You, we don't want you to have a heart attack because you're afraid. Just remember what I'm telling you. Riz told you to breathe. Riz told you to stay calm. And then if there's a spirit, ask the spirit, what does it want? You're a spirit too. You've lived a thousand lifetimes, if not more. You're just as one with the universe as that spirit. They don't have anything over on you. So you breathe and you say, what do you want? What do you want me to know? You may not be able to make anything out, but that spirit is going to know that you're really not as afraid as they think you are. Now, if it's your spirit guide who's giving you a little training, good, you might actually find out. Uh, this great, you might get a little, a little slap on the back saying, good job. But you're never going to know until you practice what I'm telling you. Don't be afraid, you are a spirit as well. 